Morning. I've gone from um, sort of heart attack listening to the boys trying to finance a business that I went through for three years with Norton to the fun of listening to David having sold everything and going again and how exciting it is when you get back at the helm and, and you're running the business. And uh, he kept his marriage and I lost mine. So it's quite, it's quite fun to see how uh, we, we, uh, we play around with the spouse and they, they always seem to suffer uh, as the boys go out and do their things. Um, with Norton, I've got three or four businesses um, from the last 20 years of fireworks, pushchairs, an engineering company, uh, and a mad one, uh, a game reserve in South Africa. And I thought I'd lost some of my stock when uh, we saw the zebras we walked in this morning. So I, I got some experience in, in, in generally um, trading a business, and, and, and some of you guys that, that trade your own businesses know that you get a broad skill set being an entrepreneur from doing the bank to doing some IP to doing the accounts, to selling, to doing your books and records, et cetera, et cetera. So the business has given me a, a, a good grounding to have a crack at Norton. And the phone rang back at the end of 2008 uh, from an, an American investment banker who was probably being burnt at the stake um, as layman's were going down, and he wanted to get rid of his investment, which was Norton Motorcycles. He would brought that in the mid-'90s um, out of the U.K. Rumour has it he'd done 12 million quid, and his wife didn't know. The girls suffer again. Um, out of his own private pocket rather than anything corporate and the wife had instructed him that he'd probably had enough playing with motorcycles and it had to go as investment banking rolled over at the end of 2008. So I got the phone call to see if I was interested. Uh, he'd already lined up a sale for the brand to go to clothing but as a brand enthusiast and a motorcyclist Ollie wanted the brand to go back to being a motorcycle manufacturer. So I had the shot um, on the Monday morning to close the transaction for motorcycle purposes on the Friday of the same week. It was a few million quid to buy the brand. Uh, he was in Minnesota and I was sat in my offices in Derbyshire. I jumped on an aeroplane that night, um, was in his office the following morning, due diligence Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, signed on the dotted line on the Friday, hadn't got the money to pay for it, but put down a chunky non-refundable deposit and away we went. So when we see the boys here talk about regional growth fund and closing in four weeks, we closed in four days. Um, Things can be done uh, with a leg and a wing and a lot of goodwill from buyer and seller, which is, is always required in a deal. So I bounced back then in, in, uh, into the UK with, with um, pretty well a trademark portfolio of, of global marks in, in the name of Norton. We don't just have Norton, but we have all of the old models, so um, Commando, Dominator, Atlas, Manx, and all those lovely old models that were associated with Norton. The brand was started in 1898. We won the first TT in 1907. We've just come back from racing the TT. Some bike fans might have seen us on the telly in the last week or two as we've been racing around at the Isle of Man. And the first, first things, it was just me. There was no staff, there was no business. Ollie had pretty well paired it all out and sold it to me as a portfolio of trademarks. Uh, as I landed back, did the old uh, business plan on the back of the notepad on courtesy of Mr. Branson on my virgin budget seat. Um, Realised that we needed staff, we needed factory, um, we needed a motorcycle and we needed to get trading because you've got to pay your bills and you need some income. <laughs> Pretty well. So we set about things quite quickly and, and I took the view that we'd got a, a global brand that needed some big thinking and pretty well out of the box thinking but there were no other similar businesses to go and take a view and a steer from so it was all brand new and fresh thinking required of what do you do with an iconic British motorcycle company when we don't make British motorcycles anymore. There are no supplies for crankshafts, exhaust, wheel hubs, etc. So it was all quite radical. Um, sat down and thought, well, where shall we go for a factory? Home of motorcycling at the time was Donington Park, where they ho host the British Grand Prix. We went and knocked on the door of Donington Park and asked them to build us a factory. Um, and to our amazement, they were all bikers. They knew all about the brand. It had already broken in the press that I'd purchased the brand, and lo and behold, within a couple of weeks, we got a deal, and within a few months, we'd got a factory up and running. Then we got the BBC on the phone as, as a good news story um, and some green shoots of recovery in what were the dark days of queues outside the Northern Rock and all of those dark days in early 2009. So they ran us as a live story on BBC Breakfast. Um, and as fast as they were interviewing, I was trying to get out. You can follow what we're doing at motorcycles, NortonMotorcycles.com or email us at info at, and we got told off time after time by the production company. But it was a live show, and we managed to get the message across to the breakfast guys quite regularly on the six slots that we got before we got thrown off. <laughs> as we got back, 
Um, the genius thing that we did, we got a website and we got the emails and we captured everybody's interest. And by the time we'd got back from TV, we'd got 200 emails of suppliers and staff within engineering capacity that wanted to come and help. And we got mail after mail of people wanting to come and help us build the business, staff wanting to join, suppliers that supplied for Norton in the 70s would still like to come and help us because the dad built the business on the Norton business, son in inherited a Birmingham engineering business, etc. So quite quickly we ended up with a good team of experienced staff and a good team of suppliers. We'd got the factory at Donington Park, we were away. And within the year we'd got the first motorcycles out. And two years on, we've now got the first motorcycles that have gone past their two-year unlimited warranty, uh, which is quite a big thing for us because in the automotive graveyard, one of the big things is the warranty, which generally kills a lot of early automotives. So to get through the first two years of warranty is huge for the business, and we start to see the liabilities of the product ease away as that product gets refined and out in the marketplace. As we got all of that awareness from the TV and the motorcycle industry press, we started to get calls from all over the world where Norton was still strong. We knew we got a good brand, but we never knew how strong that was until we got a thousand enquiries for a trade dealer showroom in 60 countries around the world. And now, three years on, we have 15 showrooms in Japan, showrooms in Italy, Germany, Holland, Spain, Portugal, Belgium, other Europeans. We're just building a dealer network now in North America. We've recruited the chief executive of Ducati to go and put a dealer network together in North America for us, and we're just going through the homologation process and we'll launch the bikes there in the next two months. So putting all of that together, very, very quickly, Norton has reflated back into a global brand. And we've found that the problems that come with that aren't getting sales, it's actually managing the queue and managing expectation, both from the supply chain and from the customers expecting to order and get a bike the following week. At the moment, we have waiting lists of around 12 months. Bad news, the customer's got to wait. Good news, as we go and sell the product, the dealer never has to give a discount because there's always another customer behind the customer that wants a discount. So there's always a full price sale for the dealer wherever he is in the world. And behind that, once the customer has the bike, at the moment our residual values make about £2,000 more than the new price. And in your dark moments when the cash flow gets a little dry, you do wonder if you pop one on eBay whether you'd actually take a little bit more money and be able to bank a bit more cash and cut the dealer network out. It does feel odd selling a motorcycle for £14,000 to see it sell a year later at £16,000. But that, that goes with the territory. And we're very happy that the, the customers that have invested in the motorcycle have actually got value sat in the garage. Customer profile, we go from 24 to 82 years of age. From celebrities, we go from Orlando Bloom Bruce Springsteen is in a queue, and we quite giggle that we've taken $3,000 off Bruce, and he's been sat in the queue for a year. And uh, we've become reasonable friends with Bruce as he inquires how his bike's going on and, and quite where he is on the build plan. Um, but we've made sure that we haven't any paid-for brand ambassador, and anybody that's in that celebrity world has to buy and pay for the bike and sit in the queue the same as everybody else. Anybody that's done that has then got a genuine passion and interest for the brand, and become a valid and authentic brand ambassador rather than a gun for hire where you might get them one year and they're gone the next because the next watch brand or whoever has paid a little bit more money and they're off with another brand which pretty well ridicules everything that you've done with them the year before so we refuse to go into any paid for amb ambassador roles wrapping up i'm looking at the time um, a three-legged plan of of how we put the brand back together we want to corner on road-going motorcycles, which is the heart of the brand. We then need to go and race motorcycles. We're a racing brand, and we've raced since 1907. And that brings the passion and the innovation and the forward nature of racing back to the business. And then the third leg of the stool that harvests all of that awareness is the merchanding, merchandising and licensing of the brand and the property that we create. And when you think things through, road-going motorcycles, the racing and the merchandising, each one adds a little bit of value to the next. So if we put that three-legged stool together, it perfectly builds the brand and the business. And by connecting with the right partners in the merchandising and licensing, we've been able to reconnect the brand values very quickly. Geoffrey West, for example, is hand-making biker boots with us. He's a British boot maker based in Northampton. Some of you guys might use his shoes and some of his other um, nice products. We've gone together to make a handmade biker boot. We use the Bramotch Watch Company where... 
we've made a chronograph watch at £4,500 um, to go with the limited edition bikes. And using brand partners that have similar brand equity replaces Norton's brand equity straight away to give everybody the perception of where our brand lies as a reborn brand that's not traded for 20 years. So six minute snapshot, probably eight minutes, the way I'm getting a nod from downstairs here. Um, that's it, Norton Motorcycles. If you want to know any more, nortonmotorcycles.com. Um, <laughs> give us a call. Thank you very much. <laughs>